The simple statement of baryon number conservation is that the baryon number is conserved in all particle decays, collisions and interactions. I have to explain what the baryon number is and for which particles it's important. But first of all, let's check out some particle names and connections, particularly fermions. Fermions are the particles that make up the universe. At the base of this are two groups, which are leptons and quarks. Within this group of particles, we're especially looking at hadrons, which are made up from quarks. The baryon number is all about quarks. The definition of the baryon number is an equation, uh, which looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. Here it is. And in this equation, nq is the number of quarks, and it makes no difference what kind of quark that is. nq, with a little bar above it, is the number of antiquarks, and again, it makes no difference what kind of antiquark. There are no complications to using this equation. b turns out to be either 0 or 1. But the key point is that in any interaction, this baryon number doesn't change. Let's take a couple of examples of calculating the baryon number. I'll start with the two baryons which are most important to us. That is the proton and the neutron. Baryons have three quarks. A proton contains two up and one down quark, so three in all. If we apply this to the equation, nq is three, nq with a bar is zero, so a third of three is one. The calculation for a neutron is almost identical. A neutron has one up quark and two downs, three quarks in all. So applying this to the equation, nq is three, nq bar is 0, 3 minus 0 is 3, so a third of 3 is 1. For the last example, we'll take a meson. Mesons have equal number of quarks and antiquarks, usually one of each. They are extremely unstable, they have a very short half-life. If we put these numbers in the equation, nq is 1, nq bar is also 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0, and a third of 0 is still 0. I hope that explanation helps you. Thank you for watching. Notes are available on the website.